so what we got there is a 13 inch red oak and what I need is um, I need to get four four by fours out of the out of the loft that's my goal so the can should be a nine inch can so we should be able to get uh, cut down to the can get a one inch cord off of it on two sides possibly and then cut uh, four four by four so we'll see what happens. Now that, that log has a pretty good hump in it, so the camp might be a little smaller, but as long as it's like eight inches, it should be good. Move you over here to see just how good of a bend that this thing has in it. You can see it there, pretty big.
Okay, so uh, you saw me measuring there. I was trying to show him with the, the tape how you can figure out how big the bend actually is. So what we got here is a two inch bend in the, the log. Now that two inches could have to come directly off of the can. If it does, then that means we're going to be down to seven inches, which is a little too small for me to get the four by fours out of. Right now he's cutting a 12 inch uh, cut off the bunk, and that should give him plenty to be able to roll this thing and get my nine inch pant out of there. So we have to see how the, cut, how the bend's going to affect the cut. Now he should have a nine inch wide board all the way to the length of this thing. Now there's no, there was no tow port put underneath that. Um, you want this side down? Yeah, there was no tow board put underneath that thing, so that's why we're going right to the. He's a little, he's a lightweight for the. There you go. The one thing, guys, that you have to keep in mind with the wood miser here is. It always uh, cuts horizontal to the bed, so it's parallel to the bunk. Hold on. So at that far end up there where he's at, he has 11 and a half inches from the bunk up. So we're going to go to a 10 inch cut to cut the flitch off and that still gives us more than the 9 inch that we're looking for. Now the next two cuts after that will tell you what size can you're going to have because, because the bend there will show up uh, pretty much in the next two cuts after this one. got a comment the other day about taking the, the log and either turn it 180, which somebody said that's what everyone says you should do, or turning it on a 90. I'm not turning this log because anybody said I should turn the log. I'm turning the log because with the, with the bend out to the side like this, these two cuts that we just made can be made thin without a major amount of wood being lost. It's the next two cuts that you have to make. But what doesn't make any sense to me about 
turning the log 180 degrees and not just 90 is that what's the difference you're doing it now right now you have to put this on 90 degrees and you and the log just as flimsy as it is any other way the only difference is you have a flat edge on this side to, to uh, dog to now the thing is is when we turn this we're going to turn this 90 degrees the problem that I can see though when it comes to turning them 180 or not is whether the dogs are hit with enough of the wood to be able to see if they're parallel to the if, or if they're perpendicular to the bunk. So in other words, go ahead and loosen that dog up there. When we turn that log, if we don't have enough wood against the backstop, it, loosen it, loosen. It's very hard to uh, see if you're if, if you if you don't have enough wood against the backstop, it's very hard to see if the log is perpendicular to the bunk. Now we're going to put these up all the way so that we can see if we have the perpendicular cut. Right? Here. Alright, so guys, what I'm talking about here. Because I'm talking about right there. We want to let it back a little bit so they can see when it's not the same. You see how there's an opening? I'm not even gonna let it back. Yeah, you see, yeah, you see the opening there? We don't want that opening that is right in here. We want that to be flush. Okay. Alright, so it's flush there and the log's pretty much staying by itself. Go ahead and dog that. That's what gives you straight edge boards then when you go to cut them up into smaller pieces. Now once you have a straight edge cut like this on one side, and this is where the geometry comes in that people don't seem to understand some people. When you cut this next cut, it's going to be per uh, parallel to the bunk. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's parallel to the bunk. That's what you have to remember. You're always parallel to the bunk with the wood miser cutting. So we're going to make the smallest cut we can here and still get the flitch off, or most of the flitch. Alright, let me see the tape here. So at this side, we're 11 inches there. We have 14, so we don't need to worry about this one. We got it. here while we cut this because again the um, log is bent so badly it has a big bow in it so what we need to do is try and uh, take the least amount of a flitch off of there that'll still give us some board what this is below the logs below the uh the one beating really like, as you can see it's yeah i know it is, is that but okay? yeah it is okay for right now because the lower we get this, the lower the log is, okay, the closer, the further away from the bend we should be. Yeah. Alright, so just try 11 and a half inches there once. And no matter, if you pick this log up with a tow board, you're going to end up having to hump with a tire. So we do have a little leeway. We could take off of that log about, uh, well, we could take off a whole foot, but I'd rather leave three inches on there. So we could take off nine inches and still be good. Now you can see how close to the flitch he's cutting there, so we should be all right with this.
Now this is what's nice about these adapters that we're selling. You didn't have to uh, fool around with this thing. You could go directly. You could go directly with those adapters from cutting uh, the log into cutting boards. Now with that lip that's on there. Let's put it my actor. Yeah, right here that lip. So that's what's nice about having those but not falling off. Shut that off a minute. So guys, where the thinnest part of the clamp is going to be in Carmine, we have up, up into the bark, I got nine inches on this side. However, over here, I've only got seven. So if we cut a nine inch cant out of here, we're probably going to have two boards that are going to end up with flitches or with, with uh, wane on it. But here's the thing, we need four 4x4s, four four, so we have to have a clear 8 inches. So we might be able to get that 8 inches from this side of this log. So at this point, what we need to do is cut this at 9 inch off the bunk. Okay? Now when you, go, when you do that, you're going to be just barely cutting through the wood on here. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. Like on this, we need an 8 inch cant, or a 9 inch cant is what we actually want. That'll give me two 4 by 4s and an extra board. On this side, we have a 9 inch cant right to the bottom of the bark there, you see it? Yeah, I see it. But on this side, we only have 7 inches. Yes. Yeah, okay? So, if we go right down to the 7 to clear all the bark off, we're going to end up with a 7 inch cant, 7 by 8 inches. That's not big enough to get 4 4 by 4s out of. All right, because yep. you need eight by eight at least. So we'll go down to a nine inch cant. It'll, it'll be high on this side, but I think those two boards we take off of there will still give us an eight, or yeah, with nine inch cant, we'll take one board off and we still should be able to get two or four four by fours out of it. So try that, go, don't go to nine inches and cut that off. I want the apprentice to understand what to do with these bent logs because if you make the wrong cuts on them, sometimes, you know, we get lazy in the convenience. The convenience of just throwing the log on and not rolling it to where you need it is a big problem. Also, that far end up there is going to give me a little bit of grease. Now, he could just stay in the Slick uh, on his way down here. Yeah. got there now.
Shut it off. This very end here, if you look at the wood I got, there's only six inches there. I need eight inches for two four by fours. Now I can possibly get enough out of there, or four four by fours, to to get that. But this very end of the log here, you can see, is a little goofed up. So we're going to be cautious as we approach this thing. So the best thing to do is to take a one inch board off of this side and then a one inch board off of that side and then see what we have left. But we can cut a foot off of that though anyway. Alright, so you're going to kiss off the top of that and go down an inch and an eighth. You want to go down an eighth of an inch more. You can see that board's right at one inch. You want to go down an eighth of an inch, or yes, not an eighth of an inch. You want to go down one and one eighth inches to end up with a, with a clear one inch cut.
tighten it up and cut that. So when we're, we're doing all this turning because we're trying to whittle off the most amount of bark that we can whittle off to get our full 8 inch cam. Right now we have an 8 inch cam uh, sideways, but we don't have it the other way. This is 9 inches here. So Carmine's going to take an inch and an eighth board out of that, or an inch and an eighth cut. A one inch board, inch and an eighth cut, and then that'll give us our can. And you can see up at that far end up there that we're really pulling that can back towards the toe, or towards the saw head with all, each one of these successive cuts. down to a seven inch can by now and that's not what I want so the extra work pays off previous to this one, he took too much wood off of it. In other words, this board that's right here is an inch and a quarter, not an inch, uh, not one inch. I don't know if he didn't, if he mismeasured his quicks or what, but 
So this tent now is going to give me a 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths inch 4 by 4. And that's going to have to do. So we're he's cutting it there now to get them two uh, smaller cans and then we'll flip both cans and make another cut. What we were doing there before when we were testing, we're trying to find the exact center of the log and without doing math, what we do is just kiss the log, go down what we think is half, touch it with the soft cut and then measure the cut. Okay, take the dog off the cut Anyway. 